The elegant and elusive movements of the crane, as once observed by the ancient Chinese, were imitated and combined with the tiger's fierce attack in combat. The name Shaolin has become synonymous with Kung Fu, though the source of China's fighting arts can be traced back centuries before Shaolin styles emerged. Situated on Sung Mountain in the Honan province is one of China's most famous monasteries. Built in 495 AD, this huge monastery, which at one time housed up to 2,000 monks, created a natural atmosphere conducive to the contemplation of and devotion to the Buddha by those who forsook society and sought spiritual solace. Nevertheless, it was no typical Buddhist monastery. For within these walls, along with the profound silence of monks sitting cross-legged, absorbed in meditation, and the hypnotic drone of others chanting holy sutras, was mingled the piercing battle cries of warrior monks engaged in combat. Their refuge, the fabled Shaolin Monastery, was a center for men dedicated not only to salvation, but to a secret discipline which was a curious blend of physical toughness and spiritual purity. The genesis of Shaolin Kung Fu, which because of oral tradition has become an interweaving of legend and history, begins with the appearance of the enigmatic and awesome monk, Dharma. To Buddhists, he is revered as the founder of Zen. To martial artists, he is considered the father of Shaolin Kung Fu. In the 6th century AD, he departed his home in India, trekking eastward to Canton, up to Nanking, then further north, where upon reaching the Shaolin Monastery, he stopped and thereby began to teach spiritual insight through Zen meditation. Dharmore created certain exercises after discovering that monks, who not being able to stand the rigorous Zen discipline required for gaining enlightenment, fell asleep during meditation. To nourish their health and supplement their passive seated meditation, he devised three sets of psychological and physical yoga-like exercises called 18 Monks Boxing, the Sinew Changing Classic, the Marrow Washing Classic. These active meditational exercises allegedly form the embryo from which Shaolin Kung Fu evolved. The martial arts were born out of practical necessity. During holy pilgrimages, Monks were frequently robbed of religious treasures by marauding bandits. By adapting Dharmo's postures into fighting movements, they developed sophisticated fighting methods whereby they could protect themselves. With the influence of Zen, what would have been merely a deadly science of combat was elevated into a martial art, a physical and mental discipline created not only for self-defense, but also as a vehicle for spiritual cultivation. This art so flourished over the centuries that the valor and skills of Shaolin monks became legendary. 
1736, the foreign Manchus banner troops attacked the monastery. Vastly outnumbered, the warrior monks were annihilated. The Shaolin monastery was burnt to the ground. A handful of survivors fled and openly spread their art to the populace. Today, the Shaolin monastery has been rebuilt and is remembered as the origin of a profusion of Kung Fu styles over the centuries. One such style is Hong, created and named after Hong Shi Guan, a Cantonese master known as one of the Ten Tigers from Shaolin. He was a disciple of the famous Shaolin abbot, Ji San, who, after escaping the burning of the Shaolin, became the major figure responsible for spreading Shaolin Kung Fu throughout southern China. Here in Hong Kong, Master Zhou Ji Ling demonstrates the Hong style's famous tiger and crane form. of the tiger with the crane is in accord with the Chinese belief in the necessity of balancing opposite extremes to create a harmonious totality. In Kung Fu, this concept is referred to as hardness and softness. The hard is represented by the tiger and the soft by the crane. Therefore, the fierce tiger's tremendous power and directness in attacking is complemented by the elegant crane's speed and elusiveness in combat. In Hong Si Guan's tiger and crane form, then, the hard elements of combat are subtly wedded with the soft elements in order to create a complete fighting method. Observe the intense exertion in muscular power required in the opening movements. Despite the seeming hardness, there is a certain absence of rigidity or stiffness, which is replaced by a fluidity or softness in the execution of each move. This form exemplifies the concepts of the unification of softness and hardness, in that applied muscular tension is subtly balanced with relaxation. The total intensity apparent in these motions demonstrates the total concentration of physical and mental energy, which is the key to performing this form correctly. Visually, a form seems like a dance, Yet, despite the dance-like qualities, a form is not a dance. Every movement is pregnant with hidden meaning. Behind those elegant and intricate hand and foot patterns are deadly techniques that can injure, maim, blind, emasculate, or even kill. And behind the ever-flowing graceful motion is a power which, if unleashed, can be destructive. A form is a series of prearranged offensive and defensive techniques which simulates combat against a group of imaginary opponents. Contained within the many choreographed movements are the blocks, punches, kicks, and various techniques exclusive to that particular style. Here we see tiger and crane techniques being performed. To say form is the heart of Kung Fu is not to exaggerate its traditional importance. Everything is in the form for it is the primary method of both instructing and training in the art, a way of transmitting a system of knowledge from master to disciple, an encyclopedia of fighting techniques, applications to those techniques, principles of body dynamics and combat strategy. At the same time, as a formal exercise of Kung Fu, it is an effective way of developing power, speed, footwork and fighting combinations all that is necessary to pack authority behind movements, if they are to be effective in combat. Simply as an exercise, form conditions the entire body for strength, flexibility, endurance and coordination. Still on the purely artistic level, a form is beauty and a grace of motion, a visual poem or a musical composition that allows the individual, through his body, a profound means of self-expression. When executed with precision and virtuosity, a form epitomizes the aesthetics of power. Kung Fu is power concealed in elegance. Power, 
ferocity and directness describes the attack of the animal kingdom's most feared predator, the tiger, whose major weapons are his powerful forepaws and razor-sharp claws, which, with a single swipe, can down a full-grown deer. For this hand position, extend your arms forward. Bend your hand at your wrist. Now bend your thumb and fingertips at the joints. This is the tiger claw. Tiger techniques imitate the swiping and clawing motions of a fighting tiger. The tiger claw is primarily employed as a palm straight thrust directed to the face, the side of the head, or to the solar plexus. Blocks are usually counterclockwise or clockwise circular motions. Whenever possible after blocking, grab the arm and pull to unbalance your opponent. Your right claw grabs your opponent by the hair and your left claw grabs his throat. This is a slow motion tiger claw defense against a punch. Block, grab and pull the opponent's arm. Continue unbalancing him by grabbing his hair. Attack his throat with a left tiger claw, thrust and then apply a choke. Elusiveness, speed and deception characterize the crane in combat. Although elegant in appearance while flapping its wings or flying about, the ability to startle and stun using quick pecking motions with its beak suddenly makes the crane a formidable adversary to predators. For this hand position, extend your arm forward, bring your fingertips together and bend your wrist. This is the crane's beak. Crane technique imitates the pecking motions of a crane attacking with its beak. The beak can be aimed at the bridge of the nose, the throat, the ribs or to the groin. The crane head uses the bent wrist as a weapon to strike to the jaw, the chest or the ribs. To make a correct fist, clench your fingers tightly and cover your first two fingers with your thumb. Keep your wrist straight. The thrusting punch can be delivered high to the face, middle to the stomach, or low to the groin. The phoenix eye fist is the foreknuckle extended and supported by the thumb. It is aimed at the body's soft areas, under the armpit, under the ear, or the solar plexus. The leopard paw uses the first joints of the fingers to strike as well towards the body's softer areas. Such as under the nose, or the throat, or the ribs, or the lower abdomen. This form employs a cross elbow strike, a rising elbow strike, a side elbow strike, and a descending elbow strike. The front kick is used to the stomach, to the groin, and to the knee or shin. The knee is used as a strike to the head or to the stomach. A canvas bag filled with dried beans, sand or BBs is a necessary training aid. Throwing the bag, striking it with your palm and then grabbing it develops arm, wrist and gripping strength for tiger claw techniques. Striking the bag with crane beak and wrist develops power, gives you the feeling for penetration as well as toughening the skin and bones. The purpose is to condition your hands not to injure them, so practice with moderation. 
Dynamic tension is controlled by placing the hand in this modified tiger claw position. Hungar is primarily characterized by dynamic tension techniques at the opening of forms. Antagonistic muscles create resistance while executing a concentrated flow of strength. Through this balance of muscular tension and relaxation, you develop both power and flexibility. Use mental concentration and coordinate your breathing with every movement. Basic stances are the foundation upon which all your Kung Fu skills will be built. So important are stances, they are the first thing a master looks at when judging a student. Stances have two aims, stability for generating powerful hand and foot techniques and mobility for quick attacking and retreating. This is the horse stance. It resembles a rider straddling a horse. The horse stance develops power in the legs and develops stability. In this stance, your body weight is equally distributed between both legs. All Kung Fu stances are derived from this basic position. To measure out the stance, one, pivot on the balls of your feet so that your heels are pointing out. Two, pivot on your heels so that your toes point out in a 45 degree angle. Three, pivot on the balls of your feet so that your heels point out, then shift your feet a half step so that your feet are parallel. Toes curled into the ground, pointing straight ahead. Squat down, keeping your knees out. This is the bow and arrow or leaning stance. 70% of your weight rests on the front foot with 30% on the rear. The back is erect. Your front knee is held over your toes, the rear leg is straight. The hips face forward and the front toe is slightly turned in. This is the cat or rear stance. 85% of your weight is on your rear leg and 15% rests lightly on your front toe, heel off the ground. Tuck your hips and keep your back straight. Bringing your front foot directly back, your heels should touch. The distance of your feet from each other is two and a half steps. This is the twisted horse or female stance. 70% of your weight is on your front foot, which is flat on the ground. 30% of your weight is on the ball of your rear foot. The heel is off the ground. One way to get into the twisted stance is by twisting your body 360 degrees. Another way to step into the twisted stance is by crossing the front leg in front of the rear leg with a sliding step, then squat down. The rear left knee is close or touching the crook of the front knee. When twisting around, notice that the horse stance is a transitional position. Do not actually pause. Watch the twisting of the body. Pivot on the balls of your feet. The final stance is the crane stance. Your knee is pulled up high, your toe is pointed, and the supporting leg is bent slightly for increased balance. Kung Fu originally meant the time and effort spent in achievement. After mastering the basics, your success in learning the form will come by practicing it five moves at a time and section by section. Stand at attention, eyes straight ahead. The salutation at the opening and close of each form is a sign of respect to the ancestors of the style, your master and the audience. The open hand symbolizes the scholar, the clenched fist, the warrior. Bringing them together means the union of mind and body. Clench your hands into fists and draw them up to the sides of your chest. Execute a right circular block, then a left palm block. Then step into a right twisted horse, followed by a left cat stance. Step back into the right twisted horse and once again back to the opening stance. From the opening hand position, 
Master Zhou Jiling will once again perform the salutation at normal speed. Notice the double back fist strikes before returning to the opening position. Execute a right low palm block. An outside forearm block. An inside circle block. A cross palm block. And a tiger claw grab. Follow with three consecutive dynamic tension thrusts. A rising elbow strike, an outside chopping block. A straight finger thrust. Keep your fingers together and flick your hand from left to right three times. Execute a right knife hand chop. A counterclockwise tiger claw block. A right punch. Right cross elbow strike. A right back fist strike. Then return the fist to ready position. Here we see the same movements repeated at regular speed. Notice that each technique is performed using dynamic tension. Now you must continue to perform the exact same techniques on the opposite side of your body. From the first punch, you execute three alternating punches, right cross elbow strike and back to ready position. Here we see a side view of the same slight variation in the ending movements. Open into a horse stance by pivoting three and a half times. Execute double uppercuts. Followed by double side elbows. Double low palm blocks. A right clockwise circle block. Left counterclockwise circle block. Three double dynamic tension thrusts. Here we see a side view of the three double dynamic tension thrusts. Double rising elbow strikes. Double chopping blocks. Double finger thrusts. Double tiger claws. Double clawing left side blocks. Double tiger claws. Double clawing right side blocks. Double tiger claws and thrust. These last three movements are considered one technique. High crossing block. Double knife hand chops. Crane wing block. Double inside circle blocks. Double finger thrusts. Double chopping blocks. Right tiger claw inside circle block. Left tiger claw inside circle block. Right and left tiger claw inside circle blocks. Grab and thrust from a leaning stance. Observe carefully the timing of each move as it's repeated at normal speed.
right low block, left inside circle block, right inside circle block, left inside circle block, right inside circle block and grab, left tiger claw thrust, double arm block, left high block, right hand knife thrust. Here we see the stances utilized in the above movements. Left outside circle block, right outside circle block, left outside circle block, right outside circle block, left outside circle block. Withdraw your fists and jump to ready position. Left twisted horse, right front kick, horse to right leaning stance, left low palm block circle, then execute three dynamic tension thrusts. Left rising elbow, left low palm block, left finger thrust, left tiger claw grab, right tiger claw grab while in horse stance, grab and shift to right leaning stance with left low palm block, grab and shift to horse stance, right low palm block, right high block, right knife hand chop, withdrawing block, right high palm block, Right twisted horse. Right hammer fist to beginning stance. Watch how movements coordinate with the changing stances in this normal speed replay. Continue repeating each of the above movements in the same sequence from the opposite side. Left twisted horse, right front kick, jump into right leaning double low palm block, double finger thrust in left leaning stance, double cross block, right cat stance with raised double leopard paws, right leaning with double leopard thrusts, left side horse with left outside block. Left leaning with reverse punch. Right side horse with right circular chop. Right leaning with right high block and left knife thrust. Right cat stance with double tiger claw grabs. Right leaning with double back fist strikes. Left forearm block. Slide step with right uppercut. Slide step with left uppercut. Slide step with right uppercut. Slide step and left reverse punch. Left side horse with left outside block. Left leaning with right reverse punch. Right side horse with right circular chop. Right leaning with right high block and left knife thrust. Right cat stance with double tiger claw grabs. Right leaning with double back fist strikes. Left outside block, slide step with right uppercut, slide step with left uppercut, right side horse and right punch, right leaning and left reverse punch. As these same moves are being repeated, 
Watch carefully how power is generated from stance changes, followed almost simultaneously with torque in the hip. From your right leaning and left reverse punch, jump onto your left foot, then drop to a right kneeling stance with left low chopping block. Left outside circle block and grab. Left crane stance. Jump into left kneeling stance with right circular hammer fist. Right leaning with right high uppercut and left low uppercut. Right low chopping block. Step back into left cat stance with double circle palm blocks. Left leaning stance with high and low palm push. Right crane stance with right inside circle block. Right leaning stance and left tiger claw thrust. Right foot pivot outwards. Left inward circle block. Left cat stance. Right tiger claw thrust. Right low block. Left inside circle block, left twisted horse. Right inside circle block. Transitional horse stance, right leaning and left tiger claw. Left low block. Right inside circle block. Right twisted horse. Left inside circle block, grab and pull. Left cat stance and right tiger claw. Right low block. Left inside circle block. Left twisted horse. Right inside circle block. Transitional horse. Right leaning and left high claw. Transitional left crane stance to transitional left side horse and left low block into inside circle block. Left leaning stance and right tiger claw. Left low block. Transitional horse with left inside circle block. Transitional left twisted horse to right cat stance. Right inside circle block, grab, pull and left tiger claw. Left low block. Right inside circle block. Transitional right twisted horse into right side circle block. Left leaning with right tiger claw. Right twisted horse and right low block. Left inside circle block. Left twisted horse and right inside circle block. Transitional right side horse. Right leaning and left tiger claw. Left twisted horse and left low block. Right crane stance, hopping to transitional left crane. Transitional horse stance, left inside circle block, left leaning and right tiger claw. Note that as consecutive techniques are being repeated here, there is a steady flow of energy. When first learning the movements, do not apply excessive power until you can attain a certain smoothness in their execution. Left leaning and right tiger claw. Right leaning and double horizontal tiger claw grabs. Left leaning and double horizontal tiger claw grabs. Double low back fists. Withdraw fists to waist. Right twisted horse. Left twisted horse. Horse stance. Shift to right leaning. 
middle and low palm blocks, left outside circle block and right rear palm strike, left grabs, shift to left leaning, crane wing fist strikes, right grab, transitional horse, shift to right leaning and left punch, left cross elbow strike, low back fist with jaw to waist, left twisted horse, right twisted horse, horse stance, shift to left leaning, middle and low palm blocks, right outside circle block and left rear palm strikes, right grab, transitional horse to right leaning, crane wing fist strikes to left grab, transitional horse, Shift to left leaning and right punch. Right middle area chopping block. Right crane block. Right cat and left crane beak strike. You should notice that many of the techniques repeated here employ short distance and long distance strikes and blocks, which exemplify the necessity for proper combat distancing. Differences in the hand weapons used relate closely to the particular target to be struck. Right cat stance and left crane beak strike. Left crane block. Left cat stance and right crane beak strike. Left twisted horse, double crane head block, right crane stance, right front kick, left low crane block, right side horse with right crane beak strike, right rising crane head strike, transitional right foot pivots out, left crane stance, right low crane block, Left front kick, left side horse with left rising crane head strike, left phoenix fist outside block, shift into left leaning and right phoenix punch, right side horse and right outside block with phoenix fist, shift into right leaning and left phoenix punch, right twisted horse, double rear phoenix fist strikes, pivot around to left side horse. Shift to left leaning with a double high-low punch. Close up of crane block and crane beak striking combination from right block to left strike. And left block to right strike. This particular section emphasizes the various crane and phoenix fist techniques, which, because they are able to concentrate force over a small area, make them particularly useful in striking pressure points. Double high-low punch. Right leaning stance. Left outside forearm block. Left leaning stance and right punch. Right twisted horse. Cross arms left over right. Left twisted horse. Right leaning stance with right high and left rear fist strikes. Left twisted horse. Cross arms right over left. Right twisted horse. Left leaning with left high and right rear fist strikes. Shift into right leaning with left outside circle block. Step forward in same stance. Shift to the left leaning with double crane wing fist strike. Right side horse and right back fist. Shift to right leaning with double crane wing fist strike. Left side horse and left back fist. Shift into left leaning with downward scraping fist. 
Transitional horse stance. Right leaning with left uppercut. Left outside circle block. Shift into left leaning with right punch. Right outside circle block. Right leg trip. Right foot sweep with double palm push. Right grab. Right foot steps back. Transitional horse and right pull. Shift into right leaning with left punch. Left outside circle block. Left leg trip. Left foot sweep with double palm push. Left low crane block. Transitional horse stance. Shift into left leaning with right rising elbow strike. Right tiger claw inside circle block. Transitional right side horse, right leaning stance, left tiger claw. When learning this form, breathe naturally. Never hold your breath. Inhale through the nose during withdrawing movements and exhale sharply through the mouth upon striking. Always breathe from the abdomen. Right leaning and left tiger claw thrust. Right twisted horse and tiger claw grabs. Pivot around to left side horse. Double back fist strikes. Right side horse and right hook punch with a left tiger claw block. Slide step in same stance. Shift to right leaning with left tiger claw thrust. Right side horse and right side punch. Right crane stance. Hop backwards twice in the same stance. Jump onto right foot. Then onto left foot. And drop into a left twisted horse. Double low chopping blocks. Right inward forearm block. Right outside circle block and grab. Pivot into right kneeling stance, left uppercut and grab, left outside circle block. Pivot into left kneeling horse with a right uppercut. Right low chopping block. Right twisted horse. Double circle blocks. Left twisted horse. Transitional horse stance. Right leaning and double palm push. Left twisted horse and left low chopping block. Double circle blocks. Right twisted horse. Transitional horse, left leaning double palm push. This form, besides being a method of teaching combat, is also a type of dynamic meditation in which the mind, breath, physical coordination and balance Integrate with the spirit, giving the practitioner profound insight into his own totality. Left outside circle block in a left twisted horse. Right outside circle block. Right front kick, double leopard paw thrust. Right leaning with double tiger claw thrust, grab. Right cat stance, pull in. Right leaning stance, double leopard paw thrusts. Cross arms left over right. Left side horse and outside block. Grab. Shift into left leaning stance, right reverse punch, twist right fist, palm up. Left cat stance. Right open palm block. Salutation. Double back fist strike. Step back into right twisted horse. Opening position and withdraw fists to sides. Bow. Mastery of the tiger and crane form will come only after intense training, time and dedication.
After mastering form, you must learn the classical application of techniques against an opponent to learn where and when to hit. Stress correct form, never strike your partner. The following are examples of basic applications. The most popular name for this technique is the fierce tiger descends the mountain. Against a right reverse punch to end with an inward block and a right tiger claw. This technique is the butterflies scatter. Against a choke, defend with double circle block and double tiger claw push. This technique is reincarnation of the fulfilled crane. Against a left lunge punch, defend with a left crane block and a right crane beak strike to the throat. This technique is Monk Suns the Corpse. Against a right roundhouse kick, defend with a high block and double high-low punch. This technique is fist slides through the sleeve. Against a left lunge punch, dodge and punch simultaneously. This technique is the bent spring leg method. Against the left lunge punch, block and trip opponent using leverage of your right arm and leg. Or against a right lunge punch, sweep opponent. This technique is the flying crane perches on one leg. Against a two arm grab, defend with a double crane block, then knee opponent. This technique is a pair of flying butterflies. Against a right front kick, defend with a left low block and a right uppercut to the groin. This technique is the dragon hides and the tiger leaps. Execute a double leopard claw. As your opponent blocks, he is open for your kick. There is a vast difference between practicing self-defense and actually fighting. Fighting is unpredictable and violent. For classical Kung Fu to be effective, it must be adapted for modern defense by keeping techniques practical, simple and direct. Surprise opponents. Initiate attack with a front kick to the stomach. Crane head strike to face. Snap your wrist to increase power. Tiger claw to chin, elbow to solar plexus. Torque action in the waist will increase power. then uppercut to groin. Your force should drive through the target. Double punch, attack different targets simultaneously. Front kick to solar plexus. Powerful kicks originate in the hips, not the muscles. Tiger claw strike, then grab to groin. If grabbed, strike with a free limb. Crane strike, tiger claw thrust to the face. Springing off the leg increases power. High block, 
Then leopard paw to lower abdomen, block and attack simultaneously. Leg sweep. Stun the opponent before attempting a leg sweep. Not being there is always the best defense. Back fist to kidney. Timing is the key to a successful strike. Upper cut to lower ribs. Never waste an opening or chance to hit. Leopard paw to throat. Some targets may require controlled force. Crane beak to bicep. These strikes are effective at pressure points. Grab behind the head and knee to the stomach. Always defend aggressively. Don't stop until your opponent is subdued. Tiger claw to jaw. Observe the economy of motion. Tiger claw to throat, then choke. Several techniques may be contained in one move. Push attacker, then punch the midsection. Use one opponent to shield you from the other. Use your coat to entangle the knife arm. Then execute a leg throw. Resourcefulness is an asset in defense. Crane head strike to the face, tiger claw push. Pushing creates a gap for kicking. Execute a skipping front kick. Forearm block. Block only if you can't dodge an attack. Cross block. Each technique should flow into the next. Back fist to the face. Be adaptable. Combat has no rules. The art of Kung Fu 
actually transcends the necessity of combat. Once the mind has been emptied of all concern for self-defense, physical and psychological energies may be re-channeled into spiritual development, for ultimately, as the Shaolin monks well understood, Kung Fu begins with the conquering of the opponent and ends with the conquering of the self. <laughs>